Hey friends, EJ here from The Back Porch Antiques, and today I want to introduce you to a new series I'm looking forward to doing in which we uh, incorporate history and nostalgia with things that are antique and vintage in the resale world. Uh, we're going to title this series, Every Piece is a Memory. It's kind of my tagline here at The Back Porch Antiques because everybody always says, my grandmother had that, or I remember that from when I was little, or something along those lines. Um, and I really believe that um, I am in the business of nostalgia uh, and every piece does have a memory. So um, episode one, I guess if you will, will be on uh, vintage Christmas. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that today uh, with Christmas coming up. So if you like Christmas, uh, join in, share this, and we'd sure appreciate it. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about are the blow molds behind me. Uh, you see the candles there and um, those are extremely popular uh, in today's Christmas world, which by the way, uh, most things Christmas, vintage Christmas, are collectible, uh, and they, um, uh, the, the decorations from the 50s, 60s, 70s, even up into the 80s uh, are uh, quite collectible, blow molds being one of the bigger ones. We'll talk some more about some other options in the decor world of vintage Christmas, but blow molds are pretty hot and pretty popular. I have those priced at a mere $40 a piece. Some of them will bring quite a bit more, especially if you get an entire nativity scene uh, with the blow mold. You got to watch out because oftentimes the baby Jesus gets stolen. Um, you know, everybody needs Jesus in their heart, but nobody needs to be still in a blow mold of baby Jesus. But it happens. So keep an eye on your blow molds if you still display them. And that's what you should do, I think, is uh, still display those pieces. But you'll see blow molds of those. You'll see um, uh, vintage Santas, elves, uh, things like that. Some of those are the more rare ones and uh, they will actually command quite the price. Uh, uh, another area of collecting in the vintage Christmas world are vintage Christmas ornaments. Now, I don't have anything special on this tree uh, because all of the good things have really already sold uh, and they're really hard to get. And, and actually, they didn't, you know, they're not really seasonal. They'll sell all year long. Um, the um, indents, which are the, these kind um, that have an indention in them, and uh, they're called indents. Uh, they sell well. Your really shiny ones there, those are called uh, shiny brights. And a lot of them are made out of mercury glass. They're really fragile, but they have that good vintage look to them. Uh, there are some spheres and some specific types of ornaments that uh, will uh, command uh, extreme premiums uh, in that sort of world. I've seen Christmas ornaments sell for, you know, a couple hundred dollars a piece if they're in great condition and of good vintage, of course, but also being uh, of a rare variety. Uh, so you'll see those quite a bit, um, and and we love that. I mean, I love Christmas. I love celebrating that, and I love selling the things that make people happy in that uh, that realm. Uh, also, when I think about memories of Christmas gone by, I think about the Christmas presents that we've gotten over the years. And in any old Christmas movie or in any remake of a vintage-themed Christmas uh, arena, uh, you will see old toys. Uh, here's an example of 1960s, early 70s, Nalint uh, toy truck. This is a U-Haul variety, uh, in pretty good shape. Some of those will bring big money. Um, you know, the older Tonkas will bring bigger money. You get back into the uh, made in Japan stuff and the wartime uh, and things like that. And, you know, really those, uh, those types of discussions are, um, you know, a, a video all of their own. Uh, but in talking about every piece is a memory, uh, you can't really miss the Christmas toys and the Christmas presents that were found under a Christmas tree much like this one. So if you remember back in a previous playlist, there was a video on Blue Ridge pottery and it is um, hand painted pottery such as this. And it was uh, of course hand painted and then glazed over made right here in East Tennessee up in the big town of Irwin. Well, um, the pottery always did a seasonal specific motif and this is one of them. This is what's called the Christmas tree plate, obviously, uh, because it has the Christmas tree on it and uh, they were quite collectible uh, during this time and, and you will, uh, you, you'll encounter a lot of people who remember these plates being uh, displayed in their uh, homes uh, during Christmas time. And um, you know, they, they command a pretty good premium. I mean, these are $50 plates. Here's a more rare, uh, example a little bit of a different um, uh, a different design uh, 
Uh, but again, Blue Ridge Pottery hand painted here in Irwin, Tennessee. And um, every piece is a memory and there's no difference here. So eggnog, love it or hate it, it's a Christmas thing. And you'll see it oftentimes, again, in movies and things like that. Um, some people actually drink it, but uh, I am not a fan. I'm one of those guys that think that the best way to drink eggnog is to open it up, pour it down the drain, and throw the container away. Um, but um, it's a big deal. And, and it was kind of a festive thing. I'm, I'm assuming that some of the parties, maybe 1950s, 1960s, there were additives added to the eggnog that made it a little bit more festive. But uh, this is what those sorts of things would have been displayed in. Uh, these are um, vintage of the era, um, and um, this particular set is uh, made by McKee. It is an eggnog set, and I'm supposing it's kind of like a punch bowl set, but it was specifically made for uh, and designed for Christmas eggnog. This is the Tom and Jerry set. Uh, there is actually a, a lot of different designs of this, and uh, it's pretty interesting to see, but when I, when I see this, I think about my grandmother, and I think about her serving punch, and uh, every piece is a memory, and even the old eggnog containers are part of that. So what good Christmas movie or Christmas memory or Christmas picture uh, could ever be memorialized without thinking of an aluminum Christmas tree? And when you think about aluminum Christmas trees, sometimes you think about, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas and how they were highlighted, and Charlie Brown, bless his heart, couldn't afford a good aluminum Christmas tree, but you saw lots of them uh, in, uh, in the show. And of course, Charlie Brown ended up with this poor little sprig of a tree. But um, in those trees, uh, we have an example of those here at the Back Porch Antiques. And again, every piece is a memory. It, it seems like every family was highlighted at some point in their Christmas past with an aluminum Christmas tree. And uh, many of those were highlighted with what's called a color wheel. Uh, here is the lens of the color wheel, and it was simple. Uh, there was a light bulb behind it, and it turned into the different colors and the aluminum Christmas tree was highlighted in different colors because of it. I'm certain many good houses were burned down because they were so, uh, I guess, dangerous. They got really hot, but um, here is an example of our aluminum Christmas tree that we have here at the Back Porch Antiques. Uh, there's a picture of it. Those things are quite frustrating to put up because each branch is in a sleeve and it will attach to the trunk. Uh, this is a six footer here. I believe it's a six footer. Nope, that's a seven footer. Um, and it's, it, it's priced pretty good, but um, they're pretty popular. This is the real deal from the 60s, uh, available here at the Back Porch Antiques. Also, we've got uh, the old um, window pane, uh, the window pane candles. And um, man, I, I remember those back in the 80s, and it's just a beautiful, a beautiful setup in a big, pretty white house when you had those in each window. And uh, it was pretty cool. Over here's another example of the color wheel. Uh, this one is intact. Uh, when every piece is a memory and you're thinking about the Christmas season, you're going to think about these aluminum Christmas trees and the color wheels. Uh, very cool additives uh, around this time of year. So far what we've talked about has been, uh, for the most part, uh, centered on uh, a mid-century motif, 1940s, 50s, 60s, even up into the 70s and those sorts of things. But Christmas was celebrated, obviously, much earlier than that. Now what we have here is an example of what would have been an early primitive uh, doll. Now this is obviously, you know, this is a recreation. This is not the original deal, but this is indicative uh, of dolls that would have been made in the Southern Appalachians, the regions in which we live, um, for those who couldn't afford store-bought toys. Uh, little lollies that were made from feed sacks and other kind of materials that were left over. Um, and I'm assuming that, you know, maybe the... Uh, the gifted individual who received that particular Christmas gift really loved it. And I think it's easy for us to remember, or rather to forget, the history in which we come. Uh, we come from an area that was not extremely affluent in its early days, uh, and there were a lot of industrious people who worked really hard at providing for their family, uh, and this is a good example of that. So tonight, the intention of our time together was to talk about uh, every piece is a memory and, and the things that you remember. And I hope that um, maybe as you look back on the vintage times in your Christmases past, uh, that you remember some of those things that highlighted that particular area, or era, I guess, of happiness uh, in your time. And um, maybe you can find somewhere, either our shop or some other vintage shop, uh, antique shop, uh, a piece that you can take home to help yourself remember uh, the good times pass because when it all boils down to it, I am in the business of every piece being a memory. Have a good night.